Hello, and welcome back to another Mac Inspires online tutorial. Today, we're going to be looking at Microsoft's Arcade MakeCode platform. Uh, so this is a platform for coding games that uh, has some similarities to Scratch in that it's block-based, but it has a lot of functionality that's geared towards making cool games fast. So um, once you go to arcade.makecode.com, uh, you're gonna be greeted with their homepage, which has all your projects. It's got some built-in tutorials and examples of games that other people have made. So if you wanna start a new project, which we do, we're gonna scroll up and click on new project, which is the orange button with the plus sign. Um, we're gonna give it a working title. And it's gonna create our project for us. So. I'm gonna give you a quick tour of the interface here. So on the right side of the screen, we have our coding workspace, which is where we do all of our coding. Um, and on the bottom right, we have a, we can zoom in and zoom out with the plus and minus. Uh, you can also click and drag the workspace around. Uh, there's also an undo and redo button down here, which uh, can come in handy. Okay, in the middle of our screen, we have uh, different toolbox drawers, which we can open to grab uh, specific pieces of code. So code dealing with sprites, codes dealing with the controller, loops, and so on. On the left, we have a little simulator, um, which is where we preview our games. It's shaped like a Game Boy, which is like a, an old uh, handheld arcade console or a, a handheld gaming console that I grew up with. And you can use this joystick to move your characters around. You have an A and B button. You can also use the computer keyboard. So arrow keys will do the same thing as the joystick. Z and X will function as A and B, or you can use the space bar for A. Uh, really handy feature. So we're going to get started. It's worth mentioning, though, before we do, that you can flip between blocks and JavaScript which is really cool. So you can see all of your code that you made in blocks written out in JavaScript, or you could make your game completely um, in the text editor. But we're gonna be working with blocks today. Okay, so to start our game, we're gonna design a sprite. Um, a sprite is a little like computer graphic that you can move around the screen with code and it can interact with other things. Um, so it's a really important feature of our game. So in the sprites toolbox drawer, I'm going to find the block that says set my sprite to sprite gray box of kind player. I'm just going to click and drag that out and snap it to my on start. Okay. So what this block does is it uh, gives a sprite a name, it gives a sprite an image, and it gives it a category. Um, we're going to leave the name as my sprite and we're going to click on the gray box. The gray box opens up our sprite editor, which is pixel based. So um, when we use the, the uh, sprite editor, we can use these different colors to fill up these little squares to make our character. So I'm going to be making a little person here. When you're done drawing your sprite, you can click the done button. And what you should see in your little Game Boy is your sprite appear. Uh, so right now, uh, this is this is our game. We've we've made a sprite called my sprite of kind player, and that's it. Um, uh, it's worth noting that anything that's in the on start, all the code that's inside of that event. Um, happens at the beginning of your game or on start, on the start of your game. So we're gonna want a little more uh, game in our game. So what we're gonna do is make a background. I think that will look nice. So we'll go to the scene tab. Scene has a little picture of the pine tree next to it. And for today, we're just gonna use the set, my back, set background color two. So I'm gonna click that block, drag it out, and place it in my on start. Now I'm gonna place it before uh, I make my sprite. Uh, this is good practice, I guess, um, for when you get into like 
tile maps, which is a more advanced way to set up uh, your map or your background. Um, I always put my scene stuff first. It doesn't really matter here though. You can do it either way. So I'm gonna choose a background color. Let's do green. Cool. All right, so you can see my character. We got a little bit of uh, a story developing here. We've got um, this guy in the grass. Okay, so let's make it so that we can move our, our character. So I'm gonna go to the controller tab and grab move my sprite with buttons. This will allow us to move our character around with the joystick or with the arrow keys. So I'm just gonna click on the Game Boy and make sure that it's it knows that I'm trying to play and I'm just using my arrow keys on the keyboard to move my character around. Seems to be working just fine. Um, where you put this block is kind of important. If you put it before you create your sprite, that's like put, that's putting the cart before the horse. It shouldn't, it won't move your character because your character hasn't been created yet. So I'm gonna put the sprite, make sure you create your sprite before you start to try to do things to it or do things with it. Sometimes it will just error and break your game. Okay, so we're able to move our character. Now we're getting somewhere. Um, but let's try to add maybe something for him to move to, like a collectible or something like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the Sprites tab and I'm gonna create another Sprite, something for our character to collect. So I'm just gonna grab another Set My Sprite block and I'm gonna snap it at the bottom of my OnStart. Okay, so we don't have anything popped up yet. Um, we need to make the image for the second character. So what does this person want? This person wants to collect stars. Cool star. All right, sweet. I'm gonna hit done. And you should see your second sprite pop up on the screen. It's kind of right on top of my character. That's not good. Um, but there's one more thing that we need to change in this block before we can start to make the rest of our game. And that's that this second star is of kind, uh, the second sprite, the, our star, is of kind player. Um, <clears throat> so that's not really what we want. We don't wanna play as the star. We wanna go track it down. So I'm gonna change the kind to, uh, I'm gonna change it to food for now. It's just already been made for us. I don't have to type it in. And food is kind of something that you collect in games. So we'll treat the star as food. Okay, so with that set up, now we can start to uh, think about, I don't know, moving our star to a different place. So in the sprites tab, there's a block that says, um, set my sprite position to X, Y. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drag that out and snap that below my sprite two. So what it did is it, it, it moved my sprite, our player character, um, kind of off the screen. Uh, I wanna make sure that it's moving the star, not our character, because we wanna be able to control our character with the buttons. Okay, and if you look closely at the top left corner, you can kind of see part of our star. Uh, that's because it set our sprite's position to X0, Y0. Um, coordinates is something we, we talk about all the time in Mac Inspire's coding classes, um, because that's how we can kind of navigate uh, where stuff is on our screen. So uh, zero, zero is, the top left corner of the screen. We're not gonna go deeply into coordinates now um, just because I could, I could do a whole video about that. But if you click on the coordinates, you can see that zero, zero is the top of our screen, top left. And as I move along to the right, the, the number for X goes up all the way up to 160. And if I move down the screen, the number for Y goes up all the way to 120. So you can see that if you move this little crosshair around, you can find different positions on your screen. Um, and those are expressed using an X position and a Y position. So how far to the side and how far down. So I'm gonna just set my, set my collectible, I don't know, to 7318. So, oops, I'm typing 73 and 18. 
and should be kind of up above my character now. Okay, cool. So I <clears throat> this is where I want the star to start. And I want to be able to walk over to it and collect it and for it to go somewhere else so I can keep chasing it down. So I need some way of like checking to see whether I have, have collected the star or not. So what I'm going to do is go to sprites and I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to scroll down to the overlaps category. And I'm looking for this really big block here. On sprite of kind player, that's us, overlaps other sprite of kind player. We don't have another player. That's going to be food. So let's grab that block and we can make the changes. Okay. So I'm just going to set the other sprites kind to food. Okay. So basically what this says is when we touch the food, what happens? So this is its own event. It's, a, it's its own, um, all the code inside of it will only happen when we overlap the food. So what do I want to have happen? Uh, I want to, I don't know, maybe get some points. I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to info and grab change score by one. And I'm going to put that down there. So now when I touch the food, my score should go up. And you'll see what that looks like in a sec. So now I'm touching it and you can see this number at the top right is going up very fast. Okay, cool. So it works, but we want to be able to chase this thing around. It's not much of a game if you can just walk over and stand there um, and see how many points you can get like that. We want to be able to chase it down. So what I'm going to do is grab another set my sprite position to X, Y block. And I'm going to put that in the overlap. So now, when I touch it, oh no, <laughs> I set my sprite's position to, I want to change the, the position of the food. So my sprite two, and it's going to go to zero, zero after I collect it, which remember is the top left. Okay, cool. Uh, but now it just kind of stays there. So let's make it so that it goes to a random position on the screen. So to do that, uh, remember our X number line is 160 pixels wide. And our Y number line is 120 tall. So let's pick a random number from 0 to 160 and 0 to 120. So we do that by going to the Math tab. And scrolling down, I see pick random 0 to 10. That's what we want. So I'm going to drag that out and slot it in for X. I'm going to right-click it and duplicate it. And if I can find it, yep, slot it in for Y as well. Okay, cool. So for X, um, it should be set to the size of our screen in width. So from zero, the left side of the screen, to 160, whoops, that's 260, 160, which is the, the right side of our screen. And then for Y, um, zero, which is the top of our screen, to 120, which is the bottom of our screen. Okay. Cool. So now when I get it, it should go to just a random spot on the screen. All right. So with this basic building block, uh, you can you, you can go pretty you can go pretty far with a game like this. I mean, you could have collectibles. You could add more collectibles over time. You could have a timer. Um, you could have uh, collectibles that that take away points. You could have multiple levels. You could have this be a multiplayer game where two characters chase down the same star. Um, so this is like the bare bones basics of arcade make code. I hope that you try this, uh, try to follow along and definitely explore some of the other toolboxes and toolbox drawers. And hopefully soon uh, I'll be able to release a more like intermediate or advanced tutorial. Um, well, thank you for joining me. This has been Caleb from Mac Inspires and I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.